Welcome to Mirror Mirror. I'm your host, Jesse Harbison. Mirror Mirror is a bi-weekly podcast featuring interviews with interesting women about their favorite beauty products and beauty philosophies. You can find more information about Mirror Mirror, including information about the products discussed with our guests on our website, mirrormirrorpodcast.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. We're at Mirror Mirror Podcast. This week's guest is Haley Williams. Haley is the lead vocalist for the band Paramore and the co-founder of an innovative hair dye company, Good Dye Young. Haley and I talked about why she decided to go blonde after years of dyeing her hair vibrant colors and how self-expression helped her to cope with depression and anxiety. We also talked about Poser Paste, Good Dye Young's new line of washout hair makeup that comes in colors like neon pink and yellow. And of course, Haley told me about her Desert Island beauty products, including her favorite drugstore eyeliner and the products that helped her to overcome acne. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Haley Williams. I wondered if you would tell the listeners a little bit about how you got your start in music um, and how you started making music professionally. Wow, we started really young. Yeah. Um, the guys and I met in school. I had moved up from Mississippi, and I definitely I was interested in making music, and um, I, I was just I, I knew I wanted to be in a band. You know, I, I wasn't really sure how I was going to go about it, but then I met Zach at school, and he introduced me a, not too long after that to Taylor. And you know, we've there's been many iterations of Paramore. There's been like we were all just a group of school friends, and there's been people that leave and you know come back and leave again. You know, there's, it's been insane. But now here we are. It's 2017. Mm-hmm. I think the first show we played was in 2004. And, um, you, you know, I can't really believe it. It, it's Nashville's obviously very musical. And when we started playing shows, which we didn't play many, but when we when we did, like we opened for Copeland at the end, and oh, it was like, ah, uh, I felt like we had made it. You yeah, know? it was our first show. I mean, we were a bunch of kids, so people took notice of that. And um, pretty quickly, we gained, you know, a, a lot of attention locally. And I was working with someone because I was doing like random stuff, like writing with this person over here and demoing, you know, country songs for people and getting like fifty bucks for it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was just interested in music and and being musical. So we were really lucky to kind of we kind of hit the ground running, to be honest, and mm-hmm. and ended up catching the attention of people at Feel by Ramen, people at Atlantic, and. Yeah, now we're here. Now it's been like five albums and we're still, you know, I'm going out with the guys tonight and it's just, it's a real like, uh, I'm so relieved that I get to do that with my life. Something I wondered about though, and I often wonder about with people who are in the spotlight from a young age, is how that shaped your own perception of yourself. Were you shaped by how other people viewed you? Um, and how did your own sense of beauty and, and your perception of yourself, how was that shaped by being in the public eye, you know, as a young teen and, and a young adult? That is a great question. I'm 28 and I'm still sort of navigating through my own um, perception of like who it is that I think I am and, and my, my own reflection, um, which I do see um, projected you know, in places that I never would have dreamt of. And then I also see it in the mirror in the morning, you know, when I wake up. And, um, and that's me. That's who I really am. I've had, I've had some serious bouts with myself about it because at a really young age, I was very adamant about the person that I was within the band. Mm -hmm. And I also got a lot of attention aside from the guys because there weren't any females that were doing the kind of music that we were doing at the time. And not at the level, which was this sort of like, it wasn't necessarily underground, but it was like, you know, we were on an independent label and we were kind of like, trucking along doing our thing so I was the only girl all the time and I was very adamant I remember one time you know uh we did a photo shoot for the first album and I wouldn't wear makeup and I I was adamant that I that I I would look like the guys you know because I didn't want to stand out and the guy was like the photographer (laughs) bless his heart he was like will you put some chapstick on or like, <laughs> and I remember him handing me like some 
chapstick brand chapstick. You know what I'm talking about? Like just like oh, yeah. just like it's we're not even talking like tinted Burt's Bees. We're talking like <laughs> dude chapstick he was like please for the love of god just try (laughs) and I was like fine you know and then that slowly progressed to um I think I had a pretty healthy um you know like growing into makeup I think it was pretty healthy I we went to Japan for the first time and I got very excited that I was seeing other girls my age use makeup more as this tool for expression rather Mm -hmm. than like I'm gonna look like Vogue magazine Mm -hmm. so I came back from that really excited and we I spent from 2006 to uh, you know around the time that Riot came out really discovering makeup and discovering myself as a as a girl um and kind of being okay with being a girl and I went through various versions of that up until recently and now I you know at a certain point I had to bleach my hair I had to say I don't want to look like the version of myself that everyone thinks they know Mm -hmm. know, because I've I've done that and I've lived that and I'm also going through a lot, and I just need to strip it all the way back to this, you know, I just need to see myself, whatever that means. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because people have made a lot of the fact that you have blonde hair now. Yeah. Um, And it seems that people ascribe a lot of meaning to the fact that your hair is blonde. Um, I wondered how that felt to have people like write think pieces about the fact that you have blonde hair you know it's it's funny because I wondered if you ever kind of along with that question ever felt like maybe some pressure to stay with the aesthetic that you had as a teen Mm -hmm. and other people are allowed to move on Mm -hmm. from that but when you're in the public eye you're not yeah that is that is crazy that actually I'm I'd never realized it until probably until we came home for a really long time after self-titled and that was only like 2015 we finished that album cycle so I I started realizing how much of my identity was wrapped up in you know articles that had been written about me or you know a photo shoot that followed me all through my 20s you Mm -hmm. know I I knew that I didn't relate to that person anymore, but no one else did, you know, because they don't see the person that I see. Yeah. And and they can't help that any more than I can, really, at the end of the day. So I just, I kind of had to shut everything off. I, I stopped uh, tweeting. I deleted my Instagram for a while. Um, I took a, a <laughs> long break. And that's, you know, what's weird about that is that's actually risky in this, like, day and age, like, for a musician, or for an artist, for a person that's in the spotlight, to just kind of, like, cold turkey shut everything off. I don't even know that I realized how risky it was at the time, but, man, it was the best thing that I did for myself because I spent all my energy focused on what was really in front of me, not mm-hmm. just, like, this little screen. And um, and I think that helped me get in touch with myself better, you know. Um, it. I definitely still see like misery business Haley kind of yeah. <laughs> around and um and that's not me anymore. But yeah. that's that's also I I have to accept that that's not me and be okay with that. Um you know, and so here we are. Like I I I know that people have heard me say things about having blonde hair and and I know that they do ascribe meaning to how I present myself mm-hmm. because I ascribe meaning to it. Yeah. And whenever it's time for like some neon version of myself to like be born again then it'll happen tell the listeners a little bit about the moment that you decided to dye your hair blonde and for the listeners out there Haley has always had kind of like a rainbow hair like Mm -hmm. some 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 orange or pink you know neon hair and so it being blonde that's why we say it's (laughs) it's it's, it becomes a thing but tell the listeners a little bit about deciding to dye your hair blonde which by the way it looks awesome thank you it's like you've got a little Daenerys Targaryen (laughs) thing going (laughs) on it looks great (laughs) um these roots are serious though oh I can't see them you're wearing a hat okay that's yeah (laughs) I forgot I was wearing a hat actually (laughs) um I that was the summer of it was last summer 2016 and um, I was talking to my mom. My mom actually stayed with me for a while because I, I had a really rough couple of years. Mm-hmm. I went through a lot of personal things. The band went through stuff. We were writing a record, which I, you know, now I'm realizing more than ever how deep you go into yourself. And sometimes, I mean, it's great for an artist, but it's just, it can get so unhealthy in there because it's just dark, yeah. you know. 
and you got a lot of stuff to work out all the time. So I spent a lot of time within myself, and um, and that is what forced me to understand the contrast be- between what I felt I was, who I felt I was, and this person that's on T-shirts and then posters or whatever, you know. It was really hard to yeah. to feel the con- the the shift. Um, How do you separate yourself from that person? Well, a lot of it was taking time away yeah. and being home from tour and and taking time even to not write. You know, I remember um, Taylor and I had tried to start writing the record in late 2014, and then again in the middle of 2015. And I just man, I, like I was going through stuff. I couldn't express. I couldn't like. Um, Put words to any of it yeah. and I needed to just rest and be myself mm-hmm. and um my mom and I were talking about it one day because like I said she was just with me all the time if I wasn't at the studio I was back home and she and my dog were there and we just <laughs> would talk forever and I told her I said you know I'm having a really hard time because I started this company this you know good die young and I'm supposed to be this colorful exciting vibrant person and I said to be honest I've never been more depressed in my life and I really need therapy and I really need people to stop telling me that they think I'm perfect or that you know that I do this or that right or you know looking up to me I just I just need to be messy for a, a while and I said I always used hair to do it and I think I'm gonna do it again but I think I just need to bleach it and I called Brian, my friend, who, you know, my best friend, my hairstylist for 10 years, and my partner in Good Die Young. And I said, you're going to hate me, but it's time <laughs> to bleach this shit out of my hair. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see a trace of color. I don't want to know myself for, like, five days. I want to surprise myself every morning when I look in the mirror because I want to have to get to know this person not based on how I present myself to the world but I'm going to use this tool this, this one tool that I know works for me yeah. and so he was like alright I got it I get it it's fine and he was like I don't know what we're going to do with Good Die Young but <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow and that was it You're not just in Paramore. You have you mentioned this this company called Good Dye Young, and y'all make some semi permanent hair dyes, and then a new product that we're going to talk all about later sure. in the interview called um, Poser Paste. Mm-hmm. But Brian is your business partner and also kind of like your beauty guru, personal yeah. beauty guru. Um, so tell the listeners a little bit about how y'all met and maybe why y'all connected. I was looking for. I, I basically was trying to do something with my hair that I knew I couldn't do by myself. Um, Or I wasn't really willing to try it because we had to shoot a video the next week. And um, I saw this salon in Franklin, which you know Franklin. It's it's not exactly East Nashville. Yeah. Like, it's very... (laughs) Franklin's, like, kind of the, like, old money part of... (laughs) It totally is. ...of, like, suburb of Nashville. Yeah. 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 It's very gridded and, you know, all the words that I would probably... (laughs) Describe to us ever. It's just, um, it's more plain, really. And I and I kind of walked past this salon called the Pink Mullet, and I thought that was really funny. It's still there, by the way. And um, and I was like, uh, maybe they'll know. Like maybe someone there can help me and just get me ready for this video. And um, I walked in. I, I met Brian. He was actually an intern, but he like from going. I went there a couple of times, and he ended up being the guy that worked on me every time. You know, like he was just like. Even though he hadn't been there very long, we just connected, and I think one of the girls there that like ran the salon knew that. So we became pretty fast friends, and, and about a year later, he flew out to shoot a video with us and do my hair and do the guy's hair, and that was kind of the beginning of the end for us. Like we just like I was never gonna go to anyone else. Yeah. I knew it. He was my friend. He was my dude, and um, yeah, he created the misery business hair. He created like the crush, crush, crush hair, and like every, I mean, literally every video since then. colored hair when you start when you were first starting in the band <sighs> I tried um oh I, did you do like manic panic in your bathroom yeah, yeah been, totally been there did. done that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did and see like I wasn't always allowed to bleach it was more like my mom was like well I'll take you to my friend at this salon and then we'll let you bleach your hair but I wasn't really you know 
I, and I was a pretty good kid. I, I was. My mom was a single mother um, when I was very young, and then again um, when I was in junior or uh, what is junior high? Like six, seven, yeah, eight. Yeah, that's junior high, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, because, um, you know, we kind of ran away from Mississippi and got away from her situation, which wasn't healthy. And then my dad's side of the family kind of soon followed. Um, and I... I wanted to be down with my mom. Like I wanted to have, I wanted us to be cool. So <laughs> I remember, I mean, there was time I was, I loved the distillers. I loved Brody and I wanted like a mohawk and I wanted cheetah print hair and I wanted a septum <laughs> ring, which I did end up getting later, but um, <laughs> twice. <laughs> but I, I definitely like wanted so badly to express myself in those ways. But my mom would always be like, please just wait a few more years and see if you still. And I kind of always was like, all right, (laughs) that's fine. And then what ended up happening is I joined the band and the guys and I spent so much time together that we would get really bored. Like we would just be like, okay, we're done with band practice. What the hell do we do now? And we would walk to Walgreens and one day, mostly we would buy candy, but this one particular day we bought black hair dye. And the guys were all like, because we were into like a lot, a lot of like Christian metalcore bands. <laughs> like, say no know. more. Oh, yeah, I know, you know. exactly. Yeah. We were just like Rocket Town kids through and through. Oh, see, I grew up in Nashville, so like I know exactly. You know, what, yes. You probably mm-hmm. saw us, and we're like, oh god. No, no. <laughs> we spent one afternoon like the guys died a big chunk of my hair black and I dyed, you know, Josh and Zach's hair black and I mean, we all had like matching haircuts and hair. Like it was just it was nuts. I'm so excited that it happened, but <laughs> it was the worst thing for my hair because I kept trying to dye it, you know, box red, like just whatever, whatever, like L'Oreal color yeah. I could find. Yeah, I call it um, like my so-called life red. Yes. Yeah. That's, like, that's really all <laughs> I want. Angela Chase red, yeah. <laughs> that's so real. That's so real. So I, like once the black was in there though, it just, my hair looked brown. You know, oh, it was so the worst. It was bad. Like go to our first album and you can A, you can see the the worst of the black chunk right here, but the rest of my hair is just brown. Yeah. That's <laughs> so strange. And I don't look good with brown hair. Yeah. So uh, did you go have your mom took you to somebody that fixed it that that gave you what you no, wanted? No, because no, remember I was like, Oh, I'm I'm like one of the guys. I'm like tough. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna be fine. We went we went to do that photo shoot I was talking about with the chapstick. Yeah. And um and that's when I was like, okay, I'm bummed about my hair. But I left it for a while. And then when we were we were shooting we knew we were gonna shoot that video mm-hmm. and I and that that's when I met Brian. But when we met the director, like six months before we actually shot the video, he was like, um, we're going to, I'm going to take you somewhere. (laughs) And he took me to this place, uh, Shane Drake, he took me to this place in Beverly Hills. Yes. He did take me somewhere in Beverly Hills. I don't, I had no business being there. And, um, (laughs) and he like gave me like cool bangs or whatever and layers in my hair. And I looked, that was like the first time in years that I looked feminine as a teenager. Yeah. So, and then, you know, and then Brian kind of like, when we did the video, he like kind of made it cooler and put yellow tips in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Haley, I want to talk a little bit about poser paste. Okay. Yes. Um, because, and you brought some with you today. This is such a cool product and I want you to tell the listeners a little bit about it. Um, and why you decided to make this product. It seems very unique to me. I don't know if there's anything else like this on the market, but, um, so tell the listeners a little bit about it. It is unique. I'm really proud of that. Um, that a lot of that has to do with Brian formulating something really special with the lab that wasn't like a gel. Like uh, originally we thought, okay, we're going to make a temporary gel because we've seen those and we know that they work, but we'll just we'll figure out how to make it better. And then we realized, like, if it's going to be better, it actually, we should make it better. We yeah. should make it a product that, that like, lives with people a little bit better. It's a styling product. So I think, especially, like, if you've got short hair or if you're someone that already puts, like, a, maybe more like a pomade-type mm-hmm. feeling product in your hair, you'll already, you, there'll be no learning curve, really, for you. For me, now that my hair is really long, I was kind of like, all right. I like when Brian was like, "Hey, it's a paste." I was like, "It's a paste? <laughs> like, wh- like how?" <laughs> and um, I've been kind of getting 
like learning new ways that I like to use it all the time. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I've used this one a, a good bit. It smells so good. I just put, I swatched it on my hand. Yeah. I swatched the paste on my hand and it smells incredible. And um, so there are these styling pastes mm-hmm. and um, okay. it comes in yellow, mm-hmm. red, right? Pink. I, I love X girl. I love yeah. this, the, the Gwen it's Stefani Gwen. color. Yeah. That's I love that. The red, by the way, we we are formulating it, but we don't. It's not finished yet. Okay, gotcha. So we don't quite have a red. I should have brought pink because it would show up a lot better. Oh, and you're putting one. it in your hair. Oh, yeah. So this is the Steal My Sunshine. Is that what you say? It's like an acid yellow mm-hmm. color. Um, and so it gives your hair this temporary color mm-hmm. that looks as if you know you've got this neon hair, but yeah. it washes out in one wash, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so this is it. I it mean, looks so good. Okay, so she just put it in the tips. It really looks like you've got a really cool yellow yes. ombre tip. It's, it's so strange, but yes, it is. It works. Um, it's better, like, I should have brought a little comb because I really, that's what I like to do. I like to put it in kind of thicker than I even just did and then brush it out. Yeah. And then it gets really almost like powdery, you know, and I, that's how I like to wear it the most. Oh, man. But I've been thinking, I'm, I don't wear my hair up as much lately, and I've been thinking I want to put it up and then just like really glop it in my hair, you know. Like slick it back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then like leave my bangs out and crazy, but do something where like on the sides it's really slicked and colorful. I want to do that, but I haven't yet. Well, you can though. That's the great thing about poser paste yes. is that you can do all the. I mean, I was looking at some photos online. Um, something that I think is really cool about it is that it can show up in dark hair. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I mean, and if any of the listeners out there are like me, as we discussed earlier, if you've ever. Uh, been a 12 year old in the bathroom with some manic panic with brown hair (laughs) you know it doesn't work Um, you gotta bleach it first but that's the great thing about this is you can kind of maybe test it out Mm -hmm. we talked about the smell a little bit but tell us a little you know it's very nourishing right and it's got essential oils in it Mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about the formulation so kind of in you know in keeping with um our first launch, which was the semi-permanents, you know, the, the semi-permanent dyes have bergamot and sunflower seed, and they, they're really, man, they smell incredible, but they feel so good yeah. on your hair. Um, and Brian and I researched, um, I've been into essential oils for a while. In fact, I thought I brought some for this, but I, I didn't. Um, I got into it when I was stressed all the time, you yeah. know, and um, anxiety, I think, plays such a huge factor in how we view ourselves and how we like view the world around us it's it's really crippling for a lot of people and we researched kind of you know we say like die happy all the time you know dye happy um that's like one of the brand slogans and we're like what are some happy oils and bergamot was at the top of the list along with other citrus oils like lemon and orange and so when we made this we had already done bergamot in the semi-permanent we added sweet orange to the bergamot, and that's why this one smells a, a t- like a touch different than the dye, but I'm obsessed with it. I love the way it smells. I keep smelling my hand. Yeah, it's it so smells nice. so good, and it's got um here I wrote it down. It's got sunflower extract in it too, yeah, right? So it's gonna like kind UV, of like help your yeah. It's a UV protectant. It's awesome. really really good for your hair, and and so so are the bergamot and, and sweet orange oils mm-hmm. as well. They they all have great skin benefits, which. You know, obviously, a lot of people aren't plastering this to their scalp, but, you know, it, it's any, to me, anything to keep any piece of my body a little bit healthier is great. And so it's just those added benefits. You posted an Instagram recently, and the capture, caption really kind of stuck with me. Um, and it was something about how when you sometimes sit in Brian's chair and he will like oh. do your hair and makeup, um, how much better you maybe can feel afterwards. Yeah. And you said um, expression is survival. Yes. And you've talked a lot recently too about struggling with depression and anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if you can expand on that a little bit. The idea yeah. of expression being a tool to deal with, um, you know, I, I I've deal with depression too. And so I mm-hmm. think it's a way that... I really used to be able to deal with those problems. I wondered if you could talk a little about that. Totally. I would love to talk about that. Um, How much time do you have? (laughs) (laughs) All the time in the world. (laughs) Oh, man. This is like my love language is to get into these conversations. Um, I I really had never had experience 
firsthand with um, what I call darkness, um, mm. but it's definitely depression and anxiety. Um, I'm all, I'm careful, like in certain venues and certain places, how I talk about it because I I just it's such a sensitive thing. But I feel like I can safely say, you know, it was it was really hard um, for me to have any hope. Um, I didn't like myself anymore. I was searching for a million ways that I could find out really like who's underneath all this to yeah. see if I might like her um, at all. And I, I, I quit the band. I, it got really bad. You know, it was like, it was just kind of like, I'm done with, I, I'm hopeless, but I'm also going to go ahead and just shut off every possible, you know, opportunity for hope to come back into my life. And I'm just going to kind of self-sabotage for a while. Yeah. And I'm good at that. Yeah, me Man. too. I get that. Yeah. The only thing that helped me was the fact that, A, I, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have good friends around me. And I will say, you know, my, you know, Taylor, my bandmate, who was my only bandmate at the time, um, you know, told me, we can, we could totally pack it up. You can stay, you know, quitting the band mm-hmm. if you want. Like, you can not do this anymore. Um, and I'll still make music with you if you want. But I really think you just need to give yourself a couple of weeks and let's let's go and like we can go hang and talk about it and um, and then take all the time you need. But maybe if we just maybe if we did just try to write for fun, maybe if we just, you know, create something or I don't know, like I remember him kind of telling me that I had a choice and that was yeah. very freeing. Realizing you have a choice is sometimes, um, you know, when you feel powerless and you feel hopeless, it's the only bit of power or kind of. Uh, I don't really, power isn't the right word, but it's it's the only positive thing yes. that you've got in those moments is a choice. Because there's one or one of two choices and one is negative and one is, you know, positive or at least more positive than the other. So I was like, okay, okay, I'll take some time. And, you know, little by little we did start to create music and I a lot of times I would hate what I was writing because I would think this is so elementary. This is like A B A B rhyming schemes and just like you know, just dumb thoughts that that aren't complex and they're not deep enough and I'm not writing at the level that I should be. And now, like, a a year, a year and a half later, after having written some of these songs, like, Caught in the Middle was one that I was kind of like, why am I writing? Like, like, die, cry, you know? Like, I was just like, this is so annoying. And now it is my favorite song to perform. It is probably, like, to me, the most truthful that I've ever been in in a moment, in Mm -hmm. a particular moment. And... And I just feel like, wow, you really can't discard any feelings. They're all valid and they're all important. And that's when I started liking myself again. Yeah. Because I, I realized, wow, like, wow, even even some of my dumbest thoughts are still thoughts that make me who I am. And, and honestly, maybe if I hadn't had those and I kept them bottled up, maybe I wouldn't be here. I don't know. Like, I really don't know. Yeah. And so, yeah, I... I, I at this point, I've rambled for so long about it, but I, I think expression is survival to me because I've seen it save me in, in so many different aspects of my life, whether that was hair and fashion and and having an avenue to be a weirdo and, and yeah. express that way or music, you know, and and I'm learning more about expression um, just for my myself in my own personal relationships. I'm learning more about my personal voice that isn't for the radio or for a CD, but it's about speaking my truth, um, whether that's in relationships or, Mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to learn the difference. It's been hard for me to learn the difference. Um, Well, you were so young. Yeah. You know, so it's it's kind of like learning to re-engage with other people and yourself totally. in a way that you you know because how do you do that mm-hmm. if you if you were so young when you started uh yeah oh my gosh I like now when I see 16 year olds I'm just like let me cradle you I know right take care of you. <laughs> yeah. but I was like in a van traveling with a bunch of dudes <laughs> playing shows you know it, it's it's um god it's so humbling to think about like everything we've been through and done and I've feel very lucky that I've done it and also like how are you here still? <laughs> <laughs> 